following uh, Dahi and Brandon, I, I want to look first at the structure of the book. This is a policy book, but it's uh, with an analytical approach to, to policy. Um, we deal with three major uh, categories in the analysis. Uh, section A, after the, the, the introduction and the executive summary, um, which outline, and the outlining of the four scenarios that Brendan has dealt with, we deal with the major issues involved, uh, the present context, the past, present and future. We go on in section B to look at the options and scenarios uh, uh, applied to the analysis. And in sections C and D, we look at the implications for Ireland uh, and uh, for Britain and Europe. And we conclude then with, as Brendan explained, uh, a prescriptive uh, agenda for action. Looking at chapters three and four by Tony Brown and Dahi O'Kelly and James Kilcourse, uh, it tracks the history uh, uh, and the, the older history and more recent history, uh, with the UK refusing to join uh, the EU at the beginning, when it joined immediately trying to change the rules, the various disputes over budgets, the refusal then to join the EMU, Schengen and the Justice and Home Affairs. Uh, the term we use, endgame, in the title is inspired by Beckett's play. Uh, as Dahi says, it concerns the decision rather than any inevitable exit. Um, but the middle game, if you like, in the chess game that inspired Beckett uh, was reached uh, during the single market negotiations in the, in the 1980s, which, of course, were very much driven by Mrs. Thatcher uh, and her government. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, that concluded that period uh, in the 1990s with the refusal to join the EMU, uh, uh, which, be, as, as Brennan has explained, became the core element of the EU. And since that time, we've really got the end of the middle game. It's been a prolonged end to that game, but we're now reaching what we, we, we believe will be in the next five, or certainly ten years, uh, a decision point that has to be reached. And Britain has been described famously as an awkward partner by Stephen George, uh, the British academic who wrote a chapter in our first book. The chapter, chapter five by myself, argues that we're facing here a dual sovereignty question, uh, which is, links the internal and external aspects of Britain's development. Now, the internal elements are dealt with in terms of Scotland, devolution, the whole question of devolution, which has so many echoes uh, of the Home Rule uh, debates in Ireland a hundred and more years ago. The question of federalization of this structure, uh, what is the alternative uh, to uh, Scottish impatience with the nature of devolution as it stands? And the argument is made that really if Britain is to uh, hold together and not break up, it will have to federalise, taking due account of the problems of scale that it faces, uh, where England has 85% of the population and a roughly similar proportion of the resources. That's a very difficult question, but not an impossible one. The external dimension of their sovereignty problem, uh, defined classically as the absolute parliamentary sovereignty of the monarch in parliament, is to do, of course, as we outlined, uh, with the sharing sovereignty in the EU itself, but also questions of law, and a, a major issue for the Conservative Party uh, uh, in the current argument is with the European Court of Human Rights, uh, which they want to repatriate. And if, if, if that happens, it's, it's also highly disruptive, including for Northern Ireland, where it's entrenched uh, legally and constitutionally and in treaty terms uh, in the Belfast Agreement, as well as for the devolution settlements in Wales uh, and Scotland. Now, we argue that there is a linkage, and the linkage is most obviously expressed uh, by the fact that the Scottish uh, National Party leadership of Scotland, who have had the most extraordinary political uh, development the last period, have said that if there were to be a referendum on the EU, uh, Scotland would claim the right to make its own decision, which is, a, 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 if you like, a unilateral statement of federal, uh, a, 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 a federal, federal choice. 
And if that happened and if it went to, uh, uh, in the event that it did go to a, a referendum with an English majority taking uh, the UK out of the EU, it seems to us quite obvious that the, the whole Scottish question would be reopened. Um, if we look at the uh, next slide, we have a matrix, uh, and I'll just draw your attention to it in page 88 of the book, where we bring together the question of the UK's relationship uh, to the EU and the relationship between Scotland and the UK. And there are four possible outcomes of this. I won't go into them now. Uh, you see that uh, in each of them, there are major consequences uh, for Ireland in particular. Uh, and including, I just looked to you, if the, the most radical outcome uh, would be uh, that of the exit, uh, UK exit from the EU, uh, and the Scottish exit from the UK, in outcome four, uh, we would fa face a major question here of, of, of British-Irish relations. And it seems to me uh, that we, you would find, if this happened very rapidly, and it, conceivably it could in the next fi five or more years, uh, we'd be facing an issue of Irish unity on the political agenda here much more rapidly than anyone is prepared for North or South. Um, we would have our different attitudes to that, uh, uh, and, and, and this is a, a question for argument, uh, of course, but we're trying to get people to think about what often is unthinkable. Going on then to chapter six, Brendan uh, Halligan and Tony Brown uh, examine the future of the EU uh, under a number of headings, enlargement, an expanding agenda, and deepening interdependence. They also deal with the question of popular support and legitimacy, a profound political question facing the future of the uh, integrated Europe. Uh, the question of politicisation uh, is, was lent kind of official support by the Spitzenkandidaten, the lead candidates uh, in the European Parliament elections, uh, but the contestation involved and the deep cleavages between North and South, creditors and debtors that we see exemplified by the Greek crisis, demonstrate how, how political the whole entity has become, within which the Eurozone is developing as a core. But if we're to deal with the rational basis of the British claim, uh, the Eurozone is not the whole uh, EU. We have to find a relationship between that Eurozone and the other members who aren't members of it, in terms of relating the single market to the Eurozone. And a lot of the book actually revolves around the difficulty of doing that in the knowledge that you have a particular and even a unique uh, uh, position uh, facing, facing the British. Uh, in Chapter 8, Brendan Halligan deals with uh, the consequences of a, 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 an exit, and uh, he explains the process that would be applied out of the treaties, a two-year process, a negotiation, a final decision by the European Council, consent needed from the European Parliament and ratification by national parliaments. This would be a very hard bargaining process in which Ireland would be placed in a particular dilemma of, of wanting to up the cost of exit and at the same time want to keep open the bilateral relationship with Britain. So, it, it, you know, if this was to happen from 1917 to 1919, it, it, we're facing it to very deep water. In the same way, uh, uh, Brendan uh, analyzes the likely, and he's dealt with, it, with this, the likely outcomes, whether it be a Norwegian, Swiss, Turkish, or Singapore model, none of which we argue applies. And the argument there is that Britain is sufficiently large and powerful uh, in the EU, uh, in the European setting, even out of the EU, that some kind of uh, a deal would have to be reached with it. And if that's true, it's far better, in our view, uh, to have to do the deal uh, by keeping them in rather than seeing, going through the process of seeing them out. Um, uh, so having said that, uh, we, the next section of the book goes on to look at the implications economically, which I'll uh, uh, hand over to John Bradley. Thank you very much, Paul.